Hello my frugal friends, welcome back to our place for another extreme grocery budget challenge video. In today's video, I'm going to take $20, two Woolies, and the goal is to do six breakfasts, six lunches, and six dinners with just $20. All right, if we haven't had the chance to hang out before, my name is Nikki. I'm an Aussie mum and I love sharing all of the tips and tricks that our family use to help us budget better, save more money. We demolished all of our debt and now we're having heaps of frugal fun traveling around Australia in our caravan. Now, before we get into today's grocery shop, we do have the luxury to spend more money on food, but I know a lot of people do not. Now, if you or somebody that you know is experiencing food insecurity at the moment, and that's why you clicked on today's video, I just want to extend a big hug to you, let you know that you are not alone and that there are lots of resources that you can utilize to help put some more food on the table. Now, if you don't know where to go in your local community to ask for help, then I do urge you to jump online and go to a website called Ask Izzy. It has been set up to put people in need with the resources in their local area. Secondly, and this comes up a lot, I just want to say straight off the bat before anybody says anything else, this is just what I'm eating for this week. I'm not telling anybody else that they should eat like this or they need to eat like this. I hope if you're watching today's video, it's for some entertainment, maybe some ideas, maybe you're looking at ways that you can stretch your dollars a bit further in your grocery budget and you might incorporate some of the ideas from today's video in your meal plan and save a couple of bucks. Or maybe it's just a little bit of entertainment to see what somebody can do with $20. I am by no means telling people that they should eat like this week in, week out. And unfortunately, I have to say that because it usually comes up in the comments. I eat predominantly a plant-spaced, plant-centered diet. So you won't see a lot of meat and dairy in my meal plans, but that doesn't mean that you can't include them in your meals if you want to do a bit of a copycat recipe. I will try to include some substitutions that you could use if you want to, uh, but that's totally up to you. All right, having said all of that, why don't we go and take our $20 and go and hit the shops. So we've got some cereal. I have actually picked up a, an oat milk. This one was half price, so I picked it up for $1.75. If you would like to just have regular milk, you can substitute this for just a regular UHT milk. And I priced that at $1.60. Some fruit rice, coconut milk, frozen veggies, broccoli and cauliflower, cut green beans, some fresh carrots, some large shells, lentils, chickpeas and diced tomatoes. So let's jump in and make some meals. Breakfast is pretty straightforward. It's cereal and fruit. I've picked up this great start breakfast cereal from Woolies. It is eight serves approximately from a box. So we're definitely gonna get six days out of that. I will use the recommended three quarter cup serving. I'm also going to have half a cup of milk with my breakfast or my cereal. Uh, this is a litre so I'm going to get eight serves out of this one as well and I will top it off with some fruit. In this case I've picked up some pineapple and this container of pineapple has five serves. I'm going to stretch that a little bit 
and make it work for six days. Lunch will be a coconut rice with lentils and roast carrots and green beans. Preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Spread the carrots in a thin layer on a baking sheet and add the green bean. If you have some seasonings, oil, salt and pepper on hand, you can go ahead and add those to the veggies now to help with the roasting. It's not necessary, but if you have it, you may as well use it. Considering we're going with the lentils, I think Moroccan spice would be nice to add. I actually picked this one up on special, so it's worthwhile keeping an eye out at the supermarket when you're there you can pick up your spices quite cheap if you keep an eye out for it and if you have a few extra dollars in your budget this is a great way to start stockpiling and adding some extra flavors to your meals again though this is completely optional it isn't necessary roasting the vegetables is actually going to bring out a lot of flavor so you can make this meal just as it is without anything extra special To make the coconut rice I will be using the absorption method so you will want a large pot with a lid to cook the rice the rice is really simple what I will be doing is adding a 400 ml can of coconut milk plus an extra half a cup of water to our large pot and bringing that to the boil once that's simmering, I'm going to add two cups of white rice and stir until well combined. Then I'll pop the lid on, leave the heat on for five to 10 minutes until the water is almost completely absorbed. And then I will turn the heat off completely and let the rice sit to finish cooking with the lid on. Once the rice has been turned off the heat, I'm going to add our can of lentils to cook through and if need be, you can add a little bit more water and mix through at this stage just to ensure that the rice is completely cooked. Once the rice is completely cooked and all of the liquid has been absorbed and those lentils are warmed through, we're going to stir through our roast veggies. This has made quite a large pot of rice, lentils and veggies. I will pop this in the fridge, it would be nice cold or I could have it heated up. To warm this up I'll sprinkle a little bit of extra water and either heat it in a pan or you could put it in the microwave and just warm it back up again. But there is lunch for six meals. The great thing about this recipe is that I should end up with some leftover rice and green beans that can go into my pantry and freezer to utilize later on down the track in some use it up meals, which basically aren't costing me anything because I've already costed them into the meals that I'm making today. going to be a quick and fairly easy pasta bake with cauliflower and broccoli. I will actually be using the 
chickpeas blended to thicken up the sauce to go over our pasta. A couple of other things that you might like to use if you have them and again this is completely optional this recipe will work perfectly without these things but if you have them on hand then you may as well go ahead and use them up you could add some stock and some of your favorite seasoning to the sauce I really like Tuscan so I always have this on hand but of course any kind of Italian herbs or simple single herbs like oregano and basil will work perfectly in this as well I do have some nutritional yeast still there's a little bit in this bag and this is a replacement for cheese but if you happen to have some cheese either some grated cheese or some parmesan cheese you could go ahead and add that as well the other thing that is again optional but if you would like to blend your sauce then you'll need some sort of blender being that we are in a caravan our options are quite limited but I did find this portable blender at Aldi it charges off USB and 12 volt which is perfect for us when we are off grid and not plugged into power I'm going to start by dicing up the frozen broccoli and cauliflower into bite-sized pieces. One of the things that I find with packets like this is that the pieces inside can range from quite small to quite large and because I want them to cook evenly through the sauce I've gone ahead and chopped them up so they're all roughly the same size even though they are still frozen, it's actually quite easy if you have a fairly sharp knife. Next up, we're going to get our sauce ready. You're going to want to drain the chickpeas, but if you are into using everything up and zero waste, you can save the aquafaba from the can of chickpeas. And if you're doing vegan or whole food plant-based cooking you can actually use the liquid as an egg replacer in baking so I'm going to pop that aside in the fridge I've rinsed the chickpeas and now we're going to get them into the blender because I have a small blender I'm actually doing this in sections of course if you have a larger blender you'll be able to just pop all of these in together Give them a quick blend and Bob's your uncle. To bring this all together, I'm going to start by boiling a pot of water and I will cook the pasta according to the packet directions. One of the things that I do want to do is just slightly undercook the pasta and I want to reserve a little bit of the pasta water to add to the sauce. You will see why that's important in a minute. I'm going to start the sauce in a fry pan and I'm going to simply start heating the tomato and chickpea paste before I add in our cauliflower and broccoli. I'm going to let this cook together until the pasta is almost finished. While this is simmering away, I thought I'd just pop over here and run over some ideas that I just came up with of flavors that you could add to the sauce if you don't have like a mixed Italian herbs or I'm using a bit of Tuscan here today. So what you could add is maybe you've just got some onion and garlic, throw a bit of that in, salt and pepper, they're always a great combination and even if that's the only thing that you add it will bring out the flavors of the vegetables that you're already using. The other thing that you could do is add some tomato paste or even some tomato sauce if you wanted to add it a little or make it a little bit more tomatoey and of course these are some outliers but I've actually used them in the past and they work really well if you have soy sauce or Vegemite on hand you could also add these to your pasta sauce they're going to be a little bit salty and bring out some meaty or beefy type flavors 
And of course, if you don't have any of those things on hand, then this recipe works just fine, just the way it is. Our pasta is almost cooked. So before I go ahead and drain our pasta, I'm going to go ahead and reserve a little bit of our pasta cooking water to add to our sauce. This actually helps the sauce stick to the pasta because this pasta water is starchy. to mix to combine, return to the heat to finish cooking the pasta and we will be ready to serve. You could, if you want to, now transfer this to a baking dish, top with a little bit of cheese and bake, make a pasta bake, or if you're ready to eat dinner right now, then it is ready to serve. So once again, we've ended up with quite a large pot of food. I've already taken out a serving and you can still see how much is left. So there's definitely six good serves in this pot. wondering why we choose to continue doing these types of challenges. Well, when we first began our debt-free journey back in 2015, one of the first areas of our budget that I learned to rein in was our groceries. Truth be told, that was sort of out of necessity, but since that point, I've realized just how much money we can save in the kitchen. There's a couple of different ways that we can do that. One is by making sure that we're using up the things that we purchase. The other thing is meal planning and purchasing items intentionally. And then of course, if you're like me, then perhaps you just like the challenge of seeing how far you can stretch your dollar. For our family, we use this as an opportunity to touch base with exactly what we're eating, seeing how far we can stretch those dollars so that we can put that money towards other goals. For us, the first goal was to get out of debt. Our second goal was to save up an emergency fund. And from that point onwards, we've gone on to save up to pay cash for things like cars, our caravan, and being able to travel. So having said all of that, we still have a heap of financial goals that we are working towards. And one of the fun ways that we go about doing that is by all of these different types of challenges. We do lots of different types of financial challenges and these extreme grocery budget challenges is just one way. So if that's given you a little bit of inspiration to maybe see how far you can rein in your grocery budget, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment. Let me know what you're going to use your extra grocery budget allowance that you maybe save because you've done a couple of tight ass Tuesday low cost meals in your weekly meal plan or maybe you've gone for a complete extreme grocery budget challenge week. Now having said that, of course, it doesn't have to be $15 or $20. Maybe cutting back to $50 a week is a great savings for you where you are in your budget. Of course, all of us are different. The prices of the food at our local stores is different and one of the things we're really quite excited about moving forward is being able to take these grocery budget challenges to different towns all around Australia shopping at different supermarkets and seeing just how far our dollar goes all over the place. Well, I do hope you have enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time here with me today. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed today's video, if you could please give it a big thumbs up, 
that means the world to me. It lets me know the kind of content you guys are enjoying and what you would like to see more of. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then I do hope you consider hitting that little subscribe button down below. It is the best way to stay up to date with any new videos that come up. And it's a really simple, easy way for you guys to help support my channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week and I do hope to catch up with you next time we get cooking in the caravan. Until then, take care my friends. Bye!